So let's get into this question that I was asked about the use of taurine, which is an amino acid, and potential effects on the heart. That sounds like a great question. Let's break it down. Hey, I'm Dr. A. I've been answering questions like the ones we're going to talk about today for over 30 years in the integrative and naturopathic medical communities, and I've been practicing for a long time. So the first thing is, is that taurine is an amino acid, and amino acids, as we talk a lot about amino acids on the channel here, because we get a lot of questions about them, these come from proteins. So if you take a protein, it's a lot of amino acids, and usually you break it down into smaller chunks, and we call those peptides, and you break the peptides down into smaller chunks, the smallest chunk you can break off into a molecule anyway would be an amino acid. So taurine is one of those. It's an amino acid. We use taurine supplementally because sometimes people are not getting as much out of the food that they eat. Sometimes maybe they don't absorb it as well, any number of reasons. But taurine as an amino acid, either from your food or from a supplement, has a number of very beneficial effects in the body. This particular question asked about the heart. So I'm going to focus on that and and there's a couple of ways that taurine can directly affect the way that your heart works. The first one I want to talk about is more of a secondary effect, and it's the one that we think of the least, but it's probably quite important. And that is that taurine as an amino acid, once it absorbs into your blood, can be pumped into your brain and it can affect things like your GABA receptors, which are the calming receptors. Taurine can either directly bind to your GABA receptors and or bind to them and help them work better. And you might say, well, what would a calming neurotransmitter in my brain have to do with the way my heart functions? Well, your brain runs on a dynamic balance between the calming neurotransmitters and the excitatory neurotransmitters. And your heart is very sensitive to the outflow of either signals that are excitatory or inhibitory or calming. In many people, they'll get a little too much of the excitatory neurotransmission, and that can actually create a higher heart rate, potentially dysrhythmias, things of that nature. And so if there's any imbalance in the central nervous system where the GABA receptors, which are your primary calming inhibitory neurotransmitters, are misfunctional, etc., the taurine will help there. So again, it's an indirect part from the brain signaling the heart, but very, very important. People don't often think about GABA and taurine, but it works that way in neuroscience. The main way that the taurine helps along with the cardiac function and really brain, muscle cells, all of your other cells too, but the question was about your heart, it works in all your cells this way. It works in a process where the taurine becomes what we call an osmolite. And an osmolite is just one of those sciency words for saying a traffic cop at your cell cell membranes for the ions that go back and forth, the electrolytes. So your heart is exceptionally sensitive to the movement of ions back and forth. If it wasn't, you wouldn't have heartbeats and then you wouldn't be here anymore. If the ions moving back and forth get a little out of sync, you can have either changes in the contraction of the heart, the power of the contraction, the regulatory rate or rhythm of the contraction, all sorts of things. And so what taurine does is, I like to explain it to patients this way, is taurine is required by every cell in your body. Places that use a lot of ion transfer, like the heart and the brain and the reproductive organs, you know, all these places, but the heart today we're talking about use a lot of taurine. And that's because they're constantly moving ions back and forth. So they need a lot of osmolite activity. Taurine is, is your friend there. Taurine does not force the ions to do anything. Taurine literally allows them to move back and forth across the membrane in the way they originally were intended to move. So if I have a normal amount of taurine and I have a normal amount of electrolytes, I will move the calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, maybe chloride back and forth in a manner that is regulated really, really well. And then I'll I'll make the action potentials I need for my heart to work correctly. If taurine gets low, I'll still move the 
those ions back and forth, so the calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and the chloride, but I will not do it in as evenly regulated a manner. So in some people, they will notice it where maybe when their taurine levels are lower, they notice more PVCs, maybe call them skip beats or something, or it's easier for them to go into a higher heart rate with a little stimulation or something like that. So we use taurine a lot in people as a supplements to help them with their cardioregulatory, their electrical regulatory activity for their heart. Now, as I said, the same exact explanation you could use for the way the brain uses taurine or your muscles or your digestive system or your liver or your reproductive organs, it works the same everywhere. Taurine's an osmolite in your whole body. And we didn't really notice how powerful this taurine as an osmolite situation was till we started to look at people who would be getting an infusion, so an IV of some minerals, let's say, and maybe they would either not react like they were supposed to to the minerals, or they would overreact to the minerals, the body would have an overreaction, or they just wouldn't have any reaction at all, and there really should have been more reaction. When we gave them the infusions and then gave them the same infusion the next time, but added taurine into the infusion, we would notice a more regular and normal reaction to the minerals. And again, remember the idea of an osmolite is not that it makes things go back and forth faster or more than they should. It allows them to go back and forth in the way that they're supposed to. So for you to have a heartbeat or for you to contract a muscle or for you to have a a thought generated, you're making action potentials. It's highly choreographed to move these ions back and forth. And as we say, you know, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, or the big ones, maybe chloride, depending. And the osmolite is sitting there at the membrane. And so if the osmolite is present in a high enough amount, the choreography of those minerals moving back and forth is as well orchestrated as it can be. If there's not enough taurine, which happens in chronic illness and depletion syndromes, and a lot of, a lot of you know, chronically ill people will have this, you'll start to get more sensitive and the choreography goes out the window. So thankfully you still have a heartbeat, but you might have more irregular heartbeats or you might have more slow or fast heartbeats. And so taurine can be something that would be given to help with that. People often ask, are there any, you know, cautions with taurine? Is it dangerous? Taurine is one of the more benign amino acids as a therapeutic amino acid, meaning if you take too much, you might get some digestive upset, but it's not going to cause you to have any, you know, overt type of symptom beyond maybe digestive upset. The one thing we do tell people, if you're going to take taurine or any other amino acid as a therapeutic, you want to take it like right before you eat. So it gets to the transporters before all the other protein you ate did, or take it away from food. You could take it, you know, when you first wake up and when you go to bed and you're not hopefully eating right at those times. And that's another way to get the amino acid in away from the other proteins. You can just take it with water, juice, or something like that. Well, I hope that answered the question about taurine and its effect on the heart. A lot of stuff we could say about taurine, but we're trying to keep these down to a manageable amount of video for you. I will see you guys on the next video, but please do subscribe, comment, all the things. Those of you that haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. We love all the new members in the community and take a look at some of these other videos we'll put up here. See you on the next one.